Hi guys, welcome to Bunny Designs. I'm sorry I'm a bit late today. Breathing was a bit nasty this morning, but it's <clears throat> it's okay. It's doing its thing. It's fine. Um, I wanted to yesterday. I wanted to do um, this. I started this uh, page when I was demonstrating about pastels being used as a watercolor, um, and so I thought I'd continue. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a very simple method. So um, cheap photocopy paper, um, uh, refill pads for A4 files, um, large squares, um, finer lines and squares and grids and show that we could make patterns with these if we don't have a colour book. Um, and it's also fun to do with kids as well. So you give them um, a, a ruler and a pencil and they can make shapes and then spend the afternoon colouring them in. Um, but I do this one first. It should be fairly quick. Um, these are Derwent pastels, but any fairly decent quality pastel will give you some good pigment. And the binder in them is um, probably, oops, just trying to straighten this up and I'm making a pig's ear of it. That's better. Um, so let me just have a bit of a look. I seem to have got the I think we can see that quite well. Um, I'll drop that down and we should be fine because I'm not going to use, there's a white and there's a, a pastel and a blender here. So I'm not going to use those. Um, I've had this set for a while. They are a pastel. Um, they're probably like the scriber ones. Um, how you deal with this is you bend it and lift them out. You can see I've used corners. And that's because I've been doing the scratch and go system, which you can do if you want to. I'll show that at a later date if anybody's interested. Just put a note down and you can see the little bits of the corners here. They're not dead straight, so they have been used. And I've scratched colour in and then manipulated it with a damp brush. Another variation on, of simple watercolouring, touch and go. Um, so I've got my Derwent number one brush because it works on nearly every kind of page even if it's um photocopy paper it's a fairly damp brush now if you see it now it's wet but once we dry it when we just activate the tip we just get if i can just find a, sh a light a shine I can find a shine nearly you can see it's not that wet and it's dried straight away and that's what we want and there aren't many brushes that do that i'm just gonna have to find this just give me a second i just have to find this silly um this it it kept it off yesterday and today it's it's done it to get off the uh, automatic focus. I've got a new, it's a quite a good screen. Um, oops, it doesn't like that. And it's a touch computer. Um, but of course it doesn't like. I have to wait for it to load up. It's only an i3, so it's quite slow, but I liked it because it was a touch and it was easy for me to use. Um, and I seem to have lost my my wireless keyboard. So things with the move upstairs, things have got, gone a bit drastic. Um, so yesterday I just touched a little bit of this uh, area here. And what I've been doing is with the ink tense blocks and the Derwent um, pastels there's a thing that says england derwent pastel and then there's a number and the number will tell you the name of the color but it's also a number that you can buy a refill 
So instead of making the little well here, because eventually it will wear away like this one has, I've decided that I'd like to wear this away and have a little kind of a well that I always use. And that means I can always see the colour I'm using. Because when you get down here, they all look very similar. Um, as with the Derwin Inktense Tense blocks. Um, so it's a good idea to, to kind of keep this colour and then we, we know what it is. Um, I haven't done a colour swatch for the um, Oogie Pen. <laughs> so to take automatic focus off. Just trying to see a certain bit of it. So that seems to be off. So that's good because it dries everybody completely potty. Turn that one off as well. And we should be fine. Put that down there. Turn that light back slightly. Um, so I wanted to do some really simple ways of working. Oh, hi, Pamela. Hi, Art Mingle. Welcome to Bunny Designs. Anybody else popping in? I'm a bit later today because um, I had a bit of a, a moment with my medication. So I wanted to make sure that everything was fine and I don't have any symptoms. So I'm, I'm OK. My daughter, my middle do youngest daughter has got signs and she's not well. So um, I'm touching and go. So it's it's a pastel. But a pastel, although it's not a watercolour, when it's used in this way, it, it, it reacts like a watercolour. So technically it's not. But what I find with pastels, even the cheaper ones, there's such a lot of pigment because the binder is, is more for a crumble, is more for a just barely holding it together. And the more expensive the pastel the more pigment but even these that have got a fair decent pastel that makes it into a block it's still got quite a high enough content so the color is quite vibrant and again that's what we need so you can do this with uh, neocolor twos um, any good quality water-based wax crayon or pencil, anything that's water-based, you can touch and you can go. You can do it with um, the Derwent pencils. You touch the end and you can do the same kind of thing. Um, so I did do use a couple of reds for these. This particular way, you don't always get that lovely watercolour effect. But what you can do, and this is what I did, as I said, when my husband had a stroke and I was in the stroke ward, couldn't make a noise. I just picked up the colour with the brush. I then went, first of all, to what I thought would be a dark area. And then I went to another dark area and another dark area. And then I went to a thing where it would be a bit lighter, a bit lighter, a bit lighter. And I kept going until there was nothing on apart the barest minimum colour. And that gave me a watercolour effect, even though I wasn't doing it the traditional way. So the idea is I um, I did that one yesterday. We might have this colour today. Oh, the brush is slightly wet. I don't want it that wet. So that's what sleeves were for. I'm just going to touch at the side there. And you can see I do have the colour on the end of the brush. Not a lot, but I picked up. And it's different to the other way. The brush is actually quite, quite damp actually. And then we just want to activate the tip. That's what we're doing, activating the tip so that we can get some nice color. You can work fairly pale or we can go down here and pick up some deep. I think you might want a bit of a deeper colour here. And although it's not a watercolour, once it's been activated with or, or, or been touched with water, it's fixed. It's not going to go anywhere there. So technically, it's not a watercolour. It's just a pastel. It's the Derwent pastels, but it reacts like We've not got a lot of shadow, we've not got a lot of highlights, but this is the 
very easy touch and go system um, that I kind of like. It's very easy, it's quick, it's clean. Uh, this is a lot different to other ways that I work, but it's this is the therapy. This is the, um, we're taking time to do this because we want to occupy our time. We want to colour for therapy, for de-stressing. So you might want to do it for half an hour. You might want to do it for an hour. You might want to do it while you're watching TV. The idea is we just touch and go and stay within the lines and let the colour do what it wants. Some are darker than others. That's the beauty of this system. It's not dead boring. I've got a marker. I'm filling it in. I can go somewhere else and do a paler one. So you could say, right, the, the underneath one's going to be darker. I've still got some colour on. I should go to the next one and it will be lighter. I can start again, do a very darker one. Then do a lighter one and then do a very pale one if I want to. So you can get quite a nice effect without having to do the what I call my traditional water colouring to get a highlight with a pinprick of colour like we were doing yesterday. This is a, a very simple, easy way to do it. Um, you're picking up the colour and you're manipulating it where you want it. And then there's still colour, more colour up. So if you wanted a, a very flat colour, if it was a mandala, then you want to keep a good, a good colour going. But I kind of like the fact that I am just moving from one to the other and by accident they are getting paler and paler and I could even get a real even paler one so that you get a really nice variation and I'm not mixing anything I'm not doing anything I'm just using the brush so it's the opposite of the chameleon pens um, that if anybody's seen them there you dilute the color and it comes back here we've got the color and the brush is releasing a slow amount of water to get the colour paler. So we're working backwards. But it's still quite a nice way to work. It's very easy. There's no water to spill. It's very clean and it's almost silent, which you, whatever you are, this is a very quiet thing to do. So you can watch TV, you can do other things. It's fairly quick, um, which again is quite nice. Uh, you could possibly do a page like this in maybe half an hour or time it. And it's the idea is that we're not going to spend hours on one page. We are just doing this to kill and chill for a small amount of time. And again, we've got these horrible centers, but I've managed to get three different tones in there. So I've got a darkish, a middle, and a very, very pale. It looks almost white, but it is coloured just. And this means that you could get a set of pastels if you haven't got any and you're not going to break the bank. I don't want to encourage anybody to go out and spend a fortune. Um, you can get really strong colours with these. Um, especially now I've got this little well going, this little wet well going, that colour is going to really stand out now. And I haven't got any more berries. <laughs> um, there's one under here. And look at the difference because now we're getting the pure colour. So again, there's 36 in this uh, tin. They are not the most expensive thing that I've ever bought. But each colour will definitely give me 10 shades, 10 tones, 10 shades, just by adding water. And that means, so there's no mixing, I'm not making a mess, I'm just touching a colour and going. And that means that I probably have 360 colours here, even though I've got only one, um, because uh, only 36, because they do give out quite a, a, a lot of colour. Um, now these are very, oh look, I found some more down here. Look, you see, always find some more. So I should have done the bottom one first because then I would have had a natural highlight. But again, I'm not gonna stress over it. 
I want to keep within the lines. I just want to do this kind of very natural um, system. So I do have a little bit of colour on here. Um, and there is one berry on this side here. So I'm just going to do that. There's one berry on there. And now I really don't have a lot of colour on here. Um, I should pinch actually out of out of my Derwent Ink 10 set. I'm going to pinch this sponge out because it's the easiest way to colour. So this is dried from yesterday. Squeeze the brush, let out the water and then dry it off. Twist to a point. And then we've got that lovely, barely damp section, which is what we want. So I'm going to leave that there. Uh, so now I want a green for the, the leaves at the top. So if I look on here, I've got four, five greens. And there is one at the bottom down here, actually, as well. So the other thing I could do, which I think I might actually do, considering the fact that I haven't got one for this, uh, this is a piece of paper. This is how I now do, instead of drawing lots of lines and things, I want um, a bit of a colour guide for this set. I haven't got one. piece of photocopy paper, which is, and it's see-through. You can see it's not particularly good quality. Um, half it and half it again. And then we can half it that way. And then we can, if you wanted to use um, the end of the brush, you get a cleaner, you get a cleaner line. Look at that. That's a lovely crisp line. And then we do this one, a crisp line. And then we can put that one into here. So put this one in. Make sure it's fairly, fairly straight, crisp line. that one in crisp line and do the same again fold this one into this one if you match the middle one up it's going to be okay I'd love to make these lovely grids that everybody's I used to make with pencils and measuring and I always made a boo-boo so now if I put that one to this one here I get another line and then when I put this one to this one oh we've got a woo woo that's the big girl woo woo wooing um so now when I open it up I've got some squares so I've got some lines so I want 36 so there's two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen to eight, so 36. If I open this up this way, um, so that's fine because I'll leave the black and the white out. So actually, that works out quite well. It's still a bit too big for me, that. So what I might do is I could fold this one in. I've got no ruler. I've, I've kind of decided, oh, not measuring things like I used to do. I just, and I don't want to wing it because I make a boo-boo, but by folding and folding and folding, it's a bit of a faff, but it's not as much as a faff as before. Okay, so um, now I've got fat squares. Well, actually, I can do smaller squares than that, because if I look at this one, I've got smaller squares. Now this is is actually photo, um, this is extra wet strength sketchbook paper, but I'm really not gonna bother too much about that. I would have maybe had a piece somewhere. Oh, tell a lie, I've got a bit here that, this is out of a sketch, this is out of a, I'm gonna use that, but that's the system. You can use that one if you want. I'm actually gonna use this one. And no scissors, no cutting. Oh, that's quite okay that must have been playing about with um 
Neos. I think they're Neos. Um, that's fairly clean. So start the process again. So this is now A5. So it's half of that, just purely because I've got it handy. Hold it again. And this is another thing you can do as you're watching television. These are all jobs you want to do, and we've all been too busy. But, of course, now we now have time to do these things. Oh, hi, Darla. Hi, Scooby. Anybody else popping in? Oh, back to Bunny Designs. Just having a bit of a play with the pastels that we had yesterday. Um, and, again, it's a simple, it's a simple way to work. So are you going out, Nigel? Okay, yeah. Uh, Samantha's not has not been very well today, and my breathing wasn't brilliant, so we've been advised to stop in. And everybody else has for a few days. So that's that way. Now, if I put that one to this next square here, and turn this one to this square. So there's, there's no measuring. I'm just, and yes, it might not be absolutely perfect. Oh, thank you, Dalla. Thank you. So now we've got those little squares, but we've got the two big ones. So we fold this one in half. And I'm not being too precise. And I say I'm just using the edge of the brush, which is giving the crease, and that's what we want. There's no pencil marks. Um, this one might be a bit iffy at the end here. Um, So now we've got two, four, six, we've got eight. That's 32. Um, and I've got 36. So I've got two whites and a black. Well, that's the blending one. So I've got those two. Um, the other thing to do if you want is to make that shorter. Actually, I kind of like that. I might make the last two black ones different because i'm not really bothered about those it's these that i want to know what they do and these when it gets to the black and the gray i'm not really bothered but i might scoot those two so um okay no thank you so this one It's, it's quite a pale one, actually, is this one. Uh, this one's a yellow. As long as you're going darker in colour. So although we've only got one bar, we've got nearly 10 shades, at 10 shades of this one. Let me just see if I can get a bit more out of this one. Be slightly better. Um, so we'll go to this one next. And remember, these aren't watercolors, these are pastels. So we, we're not really. But I just wanted to show we can do this with pastels. And I do like this set of Derwent pastels. They are really, really well pigmented. They are lovely. I'm not going to do the pale one because I know what that's going to do. I've got a good idea. So the second time you do it, you get that really rich. And again, it's nice we've got that, that skin tone. So 
And again, this is a lovely job you can do. Um, this is a lovely job you can do. The other job you can do, which I am going to do this because I shall get I forget things. I'm going to get a pencil and I'm going to write that number at the bottom. So that's P010. So that one is P. You can do it at the top or the bottom, whichever you've got more space for probably that one. P010, P030. And the idea is if you have this in here and you use more of one, you can normally get them again. Oh, thank you, Dada. Thank you. Hope everybody's fine. Um, that's P070. And again, this is another job that we've all got to do, or we'd like it done. And it's a bit a bit of a chore, this. Um, P100. Um, P130. Uh, P140, um, and P150, I missed out, so that's P160, P200, and this was P2, Then you could put T200, sorry, P200, um, P, that's upside down because I've used it, P290, P320, P330. Then 40 and 50. And that one's P60. So well, we had the purple one, so this is P30. Uh, P30, so P200 is this one. So again, where the England is, so we're protecting that colour. That's P. And again, sometimes now we've got two beautiful purples. We've got a really rich, darker purple. And then we've got a pink, what I call a pink purple. Uh, this is 200. Is it P200? 290, I think I said. Would you like to sign that third grammar? Uh, I, need, I need to send this off to Hattie, but I need to do a post to remind me later, will you? Okay. Well, it needs to go to the... It, okay, then. Right. Because obviously we can't go see grandmas. That's P... So because we need to get quite a good puddle up. Because we do want the darkest. But like I was saying, you're probably going to get about 10 shades out of one block. So, yeah, there's only 36 in the set. But, you know, it's a beautiful... It's probably like a... Um, I'll have a look at the colours and see what it says. So, again, this is another chore that we all want to do with all our products, but we all think, oh, my goodness me, what a chore. But by knowing, looking at these colours here, you think, yeah, yeah, OK, I might have a pale colour. But by doing this, it gives us an opportunity to not look at this colour, but to look at this colour and say, oh, I want that there. So I want P30. Well, P30 is this one, but I don't want, I only want 50% of colour. And, and that's how you judge what you need. So P, that's P, this is P40. Yeah, the colours aren't going to be perfect because I'm not washing the brush out. But remember, 
when we've done this, by the time we get to here, it's nearly clean, the brush. So yes, I'm not cleaning it out, but I don't need to, if that makes any sense. And it obviously needs two little runs to get. I mean, these are such beautiful pale blues, these absolutely scrumptious. So yes, there's 36, but potentially there's 360 colours by just adding water. And that's not with mixing any, because you can mix colours with these if you want to. So we've got um 400 i think that's 10 i'll just have to take it out um 410 that one because it's right on the end i think it's 410 i've obviously gone wrong no i've got one more to do 360 which is this one so when you look at this it looks quite dark you can hardly see it but actually i would think that's almost um, that one that is, it is in there. I would say that's almost um, indigo, which I do use a lot for colours as well. So the brush is clean, and I'm going to. I've got this green at the bottom here, which is I said four ten. It's a lovely rich forest green or hooker's green a really dark and again this is another thing you think oh my goodness i've got to do this but it makes such a difference when you're using it for 10 p for 10 uh, p for 30 and then we've got p 50 and um, 480 I'm guessing the ones in between it, they do a bigger set of this that's P P300 um, sometimes there is a it tells on the back how many how many we've got do love these uh, spongy kind of things so he says here 360 uh, yes you can use them with water you can blend them together as a pastel um, but for coloring in they do just as well and they're not that expensive for, for the vibrancy I mean I know we go on about ink tense pencils and ink tense blocks but you know these are still quite bright they're still lovely Oh, Pamela, this is very pretty colours. They are really lovely. I would think there's probably a set of 72. I've never thought. Um, but um, I think Hubby bought me these one day when I wasn't well. So um, so I've got P300 and then we've got P... I say it's going. You see, I'm a grandmother now, so the I say it's going. Um, no, it's 500. That That's 480. It's 500, 500, and then we've got 510, and then we've got 540, um, 60. Ninety. Um, 650. I think that's five. Gosh, the ice. I've had smelts. They might not be in the right order, but. I think that's five. Oh, my goodness me. I think it's 560 that one not sure what color that one is uh, 620 640 590 
goodness me, I can't believe my eyesight's going. <laughs> oh, hi, Shannon. Welcome to Punny Designs. 580, that one. Six ninety, and then I've got six. I'll do that there. Six P six seven hundred P seven hundred. And P710. It's been a bit of a, a, a waffle, but it works. So we've got um, 430. I don't know what that one is. Okay, it's, it's 530. Okay. Let's have a got a P530. So 430, and um, we have the P, that one, 410, I was down there, so P30 was this one, and again, I think it's to let it get wet and then go back to it. Four fifty, but it's not up by four fifty, but it is four fifty. And again, this is the difference of the brush when you use it, when you use all the brush, you get a lot more water. Um, four eighty. Five hundred. So we've got some lovely greens here. So sorry about this being a bit boring, but you can see how long it takes. But then the benefit of doing it, because I used to say, oh, I'm not going to waste my paints doing this. I've always said I never did it. But when you've got something down here, you really don't have a clue what they're going to look like. It's a good idea. That's 540. And 540 is almost a black. And um, five ninety. Some gorgeous colours coming out of here. Really quite rich. I'm just going to clean that on my hand because. It is a bit and six fifty. You probably should do this with like a normal brush, but it is quite a versatile brush this. So you've got some quite nice browns, earthy tones really quite spectacular and then this is like a brick red i think 
So again, it's almost like a traditional set. Um, that's the yellow ochre. And this is like a, a brick red as well. So that's a nice one. This one, is, I think like an ochre color. Or raw sienna. That one's like a burnt sienna. This is like a grey. It's a warm grey is this one. It's quite a nice grey, this one. I'm not going to bother with the um, the white. This one I think probably is more like a 700. This one is probably like a Payne's grey. I'm guessing this is a black. Yeah, so that's lamp black and Payne's grey at the back. So we've got a rough idea what these will do. But it's the it's the colours here and the greens that you can't really tell what they're going to do. So that's why it's a good idea. So now I can look at this and have a really good idea that, you know, th th this is the I knew that would be that. One, but these three blues here or five blues here um, and that that purple is kind of a movie purple and that one's a pinky purple. So, again, and it sorts the reds out. So you've got. If you're looking for colours down here, you won't see that when you're looking here. So it's a it's a good it's a good day. Oh hi, Sun Sunpipe! Welcome to Bunny Designs. So now I have a bit of a guide, um, and then squeeze the brush to get water and twist. Um, so if you've got any questions thanks for joining me guys hope everyone's okay i'm gonna have a drink of water I had a bit of a scare this morning because my breathing was really bad during the night and this morning but um i haven't got a temperature i've got the all clear so that's fine i knew i'd do that i thought i'd put the ruler in it and i shut it and i just said And where we need a little mushroom. There we are. Got him. I shall move that up slightly so we can see what we're doing. Um, it might just have to be really bad and shut the sun out so we've not got that shadow. Bear with me a second. Um, so I, I did ring up for some extra medication and um, they they called me in. But um, I have the all clear at the moment, so fingers crossed. So hopefully... Everything's OK because my daughter's not going into work because she's she's got um, a sneeze and a cough. Uh, but being being 19, she's not going to show any symptoms. She might not even be have any symptoms at all, actually. So um, hey, -ho, that's where we are at the minute. So let's all keep safe and keep colouring. <laughs> so a reason I was using this, if you've got pastels and you don't have any watercolours, just use the pastels. I'm trying to go through some of the very simple things we've got that we don't have to go out. We can still do it. And as I say, um, probably later, I'm going to be going through ordinary bits of paper we can find through the house, a ruler and a pencil to make some um, shapes and then to colour in if we don't have a colour book. Oh, th thank you, pa pa Pamela. Thank you. 
<coughs> excuse me, my breathing is just really bad at the minute. So, um, I mean, I'm supposed she said 10, 10 steroids, steroids a day for 10 for eight days. I'm not gonna take 10, I can't take 10, sorry just can't take 10 um i had a scare i had to go in a nebulizer my daughter dislocated a thumb and i didn't want to pop it back in so she went to casualty and then popped it back in and because i got out the car and walked across the car park i had an ass i was kind of really breathy so when i went in they admitted me and not my daughter and they put me on a nebulizer and um they they were saying that you know have the steroids and that and this doctor said never ever take more than five this is because i've got ckd stage three chronic kidney disease um he said i'd rather see you in a in the corner gasping for air he said rather see you in the corner blue gasping for air than on the mortuary slab <laughs> scared me to death and he said i had to promise never to take more than five um because they would be so dangerous to do that now for a normal person with asthma that's fine it's just because i've got kidney disease i've got to be very careful about that and that really scared me and i did mention it to her today and she said oh it's only for five days you'll be safe and i thought yeah sorry i'm not gonna take i'm not gonna take 10 10 predisimone for five days i'm really sorry <laughs> i'm really sorry it's the only thing I really am um, not, I don't take any notice of people. Um, and normally I always do, but I'm not going to take 10 for five days um, because, nah, no. <laughs> but normally I would do everything they say. Right, colours. So now I can look at my greens and I've got two, four, got six greens that I love. So I think, I like 510 and when you look at 510 you wouldn't think it would be um, actually no I think I'm gonna yes I'm gonna go for 510 so I'm gonna stick with that um, and again I'm not going to be doing light to dark and shadows but it will probably happen sorry guys I don't know why I said that just don't take any notice of me. You've got to take you've got to take medication when the doctor says you've got to take medication. But sometimes you just got to be a little bit careful. Because some doctors you don't always know that you're on certain things. But I mean if I was if 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 they weren't working, if 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 five five didn't work six didn't work then then i would probably up it but uh, it is a bit of a false economy anyway and i've just realized i've just done a berry steroids are a false economy because steroids you think oh i feel wonderful <laughs> and then when you stop taking them it's like way so if i do a light one on the top and a darker one underneath i'm still going to get that nice effect um and i'm not doing very much more i wish i could just talk about art and not waffle on about anything else sorry guys it was quite funny this afternoon um we, we were going to the doctors we've driven into town which i wouldn't normally do and and everybody had the biggest pack of toilet everybody there was an old lady that had four pack an old lady could hardly walk she had four big packs of toilet roll and i know for a fact this lady does lives alone um but then then there was a set of a family um who every able body had a pack of toilet rolls i mean i'm not talking about a little pack i'm talking about the the 24 pack that is hangs to the ground when you walk um and i'm thinking what on earth is this all about? <laughs> we've got 10 toilet rolls in our house 
and hubby says, we don't need any yet. <laughs> okay, so, no, that's okay. I said, I want a kitchen roll. We've got half a kitchen roll in my bedroom, but I do use a lot of kitchen roll. When I cook, I cook a lot because I think tea towels are dirty. So I do use a kitchen roll uh, and I use it for art and for other things as well. Um, and he said, if, if I want to put something down, um, I, I mean, I don't waste it, but I am a kitchen roll girl. Um, and we've got half of one upstairs and there's one downstairs. So I said, well, I'd like a kitchen roll. So if you get a pack, I've got one upstairs. Um, but I said, not bothered about toilet roll. If the worst comes to the worst, you cut an old towel up and you just use that and make sure you wash it out. Because it's only the same as getting in the bath. If you get in the bath, um, and you're cleaning your you know, you know what, you know where, um, you're going to dry it on a towel. You don't get out of the bath and clean your backside with toilet paper. So if you're going to have a if you're going to have a wash, have a wash. Um, you just have to clean the towel out a bit more. That's all. So I'm not I can't grasp that. Now, we have no milk and we have no bread. Um, it doesn't really bother me because I don't use I have soya milk and, and almond milk. Um, but my girls have soya milk, but my friend doesn't have any milk uh, and they're in their 80s. Um, so I'm going to give them my soya milk because the girls can can drink cow's milk. It's just they prefer not to because I always use soya. Um, and now I've gone on to almond milk and we had them in the pantry. I got four soya milks Um uh, sorry, uh, almond milk. So upstairs, I've got three because I've obviously used one this week. So I've got a couple of weeks. So I'm not going to go out and buy another four. I'm going to say, well, if it runs out, I'll have to have a herbal tea. I've got so many herbal teas that I need to be used up that actually it would do me a favour if I couldn't get any milk. I don't have bread. Now, my girls, if I make a soup, they will have bread. Um, but the funny thing is, I'm losing weight. <laughs> because um, I've had a packet of crisps today, but I was getting where I was poorly. I couldn't make anything. So I got a packet of crisps and a chocolate bar. Um, I've got oat and uh, rice cakes upstairs. Um, don't go downstairs for anything. So uh, in theory, using this time, I should lose weight. Uh, which you've got to say is a bonus because... I've been trying to lose weight on and off for um, quite a few years now. So we have to look on the positive. Um, and I think we could eat more fruit and veg and things like that. So we've, we, we could use this time for our advantage, learn a language. If you, I've been trying to do the Spanish thing, learn a language. Um, a brush upon your Shakespeare, read that book that you've been wanting to read for blooming ages, uh, clean drawers out, go through your knicker drawer, try all your clothes on and decide, I don't really like this. These are things that we don't have time to do because we're so busy, but we're not going to be that busy now. So we can, we, and then we'll feel so much better. So not only will we feel better that the world is turning back to normal, but we've We've, we've done jobs that we've been bugging us to do for the last two or three years. Um, if you can, get out and get your decorating stuff. And then when it comes that we can't get out um, or buy online and um, decorate the whole house. There's always a room that we need to do. Um, get in the garden. We've got half an acre. Now I can't get in the garden, but my daughter's in the garden. Um, take your colouring out into the garden when the weather gets nice. There's all sorts of things we can do. And we all say, oh, God, I haven't got enough time to do this. Well, now we have. We now have time to do that. Buy a rowing machine. Buy a, uh, buy a if you're fit or fairly fit, buy, buy an exercise bike. And then put all your favourite movies on. Um can all sorts of things like that oh, Shannon says she's got 15 dogs and seven cats wow and you see my daughter thinks we're res rescue nutters <laughs> 15 
eating waffles. Wow. Well, we can't because Alf is a little bit aggressive, so we can't have that many. But yeah, I mean, if you were going to walk all your dogs, <laughs> yeah, it takes you probably all day. You have to get in touch with my daughter if you have 15 dogs. Now, I've got some green on here and I want to change the colour. And I've no more of these because I've been talking. But I don't know if anybody else has got any more ideas about what to do. Um, I found another blooming bee there now. If I do this, I've got to carry on doing it. And then I've got to realise that I need to be the, at the end. I'll do this. And oh, no, I don't want that brown. I want that brown, don't I? I might pretend that's a jewel. But then I'd have to pretend that those two are jewels as well. Ooh, come on. I need a I need a green. I need a bit of a bit of green that I've missed. I've got anything that I've missed. Normally I pick a page I don't really like, but then there aren't many pages in this book that I don't really like. Um I must have missed something on ah, oh, there's a bug here. It's it's a I don't about right so let's have a look so if we go in the middle of if we go on the bottom of that one it's quite dark I hope we can see am i still in frame there then i'll go to the other side and then i go to that side go to that side and then go to the middle it looks like a jewel because i've i've gone to different sides of it but not next to it right so i got rid of that it's dried already so that's fine do love these lovely colors and again you'd think um we can't mix we can mix these colors but just to come out of a lovely set these colors are really unusual because we don't normally use them as a watercolor just got a light just touching my <laughs> Right, so, and I love these colours. Now, if you feel, if you listen, and then you can pick, so that's shiny, and that's rough, and that's because it's a pastel. Now, if I did a very dark colour, it would, it would smudge, because you've got to have the right ratio of dampness to set the pigment um, and, and the binder. So, uh, it's, Although it reacts like a watercolour, technically it isn't. But you don't have to spray it. It's set. So it's that's quite nice as well. Quite impressed with my colours, have to say. That makes such a difference than looking at that. Because when you're looking here, you, know, you really, even if I put it in the light, you don't have any idea what they are at all. Um, and even, even the ones we can see, we wouldn't know that we've got these beautiful colours here by looking down here. So I always say, when you're watching TV, do a little colour swatch. Haven't used a lot, hardly used any, but that's going to be really important. But of course, normally you wouldn't do that with a pastel because we wouldn't use it in a colour book. But what I want to try and do is say, if somebody's got, the kids have got some pastels, even the cheap pastels those little um inscribed ones that are tiny quarters i've got one pack i think it's got 48 colors in the little tiny quarter squares not even half i think they're really tiny um i'll ask cubby to bring them up if i can get hold of him um and then how many colors have we got there um and we're using them up as well because now i can't do pastel and pastels because of the dust of my asthma, but I can use them up as a watercolour in a colour book. Um, so I had a darker green that I think I'm going to use for this one, um, and that would be P410. Well, that one's 540, which is that one. That's very dark. It's almost a black. But this one is 410. Oh, that's the one that's down at the bottom here. Look, sticking out. That's the one that's here. 410. I've lost my little clip. Um, so we said 410 was here. 
again I'm using that little England bit for a well um, and then taking that to the edge there and then back along the top As it's not going to give me a watercolour effect, but it's a beautiful, lovely, soft colour is this, even though it's extremely dark. Again, if you don't turn the page, you run the risk of going over the line, but I think it would drive everybody scatty if I did that. So again, very pale on top. Um, and then we can start quite dark. I've got that awful crease down there, which I don't like. And then we've got one on the top here. So we can have it almost full strength. And because this, although technically it's not a watercolour, it will move again if I touch it with a brush. So it's not a technically a watercolour, but it behaves like a watercolour. Um, you can move it again. especially if it's a strong colour, it will move. But it just glides along the page. That they, they literally melt these pastel dust particles, which are, they have a very, very mild, just a little touch of a binder to make it go into a cake. Um, it's not gum arabic. Or if it is, it's got something mixed in it to dilute the gum arabic. It's just barely holding these particles of colour, these comp the, the 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 pigments together, which are mainly always dust, coloured dust, um, in pigment form, just barely holding itself together. But of course, when you add the water to it, it they just melt. Oh, thank you, Kenny. Thank you. Yeah, the, the colours, they are quite spectacular. Full of, And if you, they are a bit chalky, uh, they're set. But if I went to a dark one, you'd probably find a bit comes off because it's a pastel, um, but it has dissolved into that. So we've got a little mouse. Um, I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do the tips of those berries. Um, I might do those, the indigo, actually, so that's 360, which I think is down here. Um, I like the idea of those. Um, I think I'm going to put those. So it's like a, a grey blue, very, very dark indigo blue. It's too blue to be... I think it's too blue to be Payne's grey. But it, it really is the last blue before you get to grey. It is really. I don't think, I think it's just that bit too blue to be Payne's grey. I think Payne's grey is a dead is a dead colour. Yeah, Payne's grey doesn't have any. You can't notice any blue in it. Whereas indigo is next to Payne's grey, going towards blue. So it's it's a very dark blue. It's a blue grey rather than a grey blue. And I'm only putting a pinhead 
picking up a pinhead at a time because I would get very, very strong colour. And I want that little extra line to show through. I think I've done them all. I've got one or two down here. And I do love this little brush. It so behaves itself. It's really a good little brush. It does behave itself so well. I almost miss one. I think I've got them all and I, I love the colours and I'm not doing anything it's just touch and go and yet you'd think I'd have to make make these colours because they're unusual because they're not traditional colours because when you have them in a pastel form it changes a bit um I think we're going to have some bright red toadstools so I think I'm going to go for the middle one and yeah, I think I'm going to go for the this one, 30. And I had a little bit of black on there. But it's almost gone now. And this is going to be quite strong. But what I'm hoping to do, and again, this little brush so behaves itself. It's really quite amazing and again you can move it about you don't get a line when it's dried because it's even more maneuverable or movable because there is no binder with it so it really will reconstitute and move about really nicely without too much effort. And you don't get any lines because you can just, if you're careful, just jiggle them around again and we're off. And again, it's so therapeutic to just push this paint around. can just maneuver it again and if you pick up just a little bit of colour rather than too much you've almost got that same tone whereas if you picked up quite a lot it would become the darker one below which we don't want so we can move this about quite nicely And it is very therapeutic. You forget, you almost forget that you, you're doing something. You're just enjoying pushing that colour around. Um, I, I, Shannon asked, do I prefer water mediums over dry? The thing is, it's not a watercolour. Um, I, I, I like oils, I like acrylics, I like anything. It depends what I'm doing. Um, the, the thing with this brush is it kind of will manipulate most water-based things. Um, really, you should use a watercolour as a watercolour 
um, all I wanted to demonstrate is if you've only got pastels and you wanted to do a method, don't, for goodness sake, think you've got to go out and buy some paints. So that's the only reason I'm doing it. Um, I It depends what I'm doing. Um, if I'm, I'd love to do my oils again. Um, so I, it, it depends what I'm doing at the time. I I don't when I'm painting when I'm being an artist I don't color um and that's been my problem this last few months you know I've I've just found out that it's it's 8 years since well more it's 12 years since I painted an oil painting um and that's disgraceful, absolutely disgraceful. Um, it's 12 years since I've done anything. So I'm kind of a bit um, things with myself. I'm a bit upset with myself because that's not really on. You know, it's, 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 it's a long time since I've, since I've done any art. This to me, it, it's not my art. This is for therapy. Um, as an artist playing with oils and drawing and, and doing things that's what I do um, you know I want to be able to get photorealism so that you can almost pull the paper away um, this was painted I say with the dog hair so I, I, I kind of I kind of um, it's different it's different this is different this is for therapy this is for ease um and this is this is um a hobby if you if you can say that this is what i would still like to get back to is painting you know this is a three foot by three foot painting um there's one that's um these are all my books this is when we were moving the books from one room to another <laughs> got a lot of books got a lot of books um oops skin's gone things gone um so it's it, I, i'm cross that i can't get back to to doing what i like to do um and this is a substitute if you if you'd like to call it that um i was tiny miniatures i hadn't decided what i wanted to do when i went to uni which was probably not a good idea um I was looking for the painting but I like to do big five foot by five foot paintings because that's that's what I wanted to do um, even though I originally trained as a graphic designer um, so it's not what I prefer as such it's just what I have and that's why I've got everything because I bought pastels um, and it's 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 different it's different but i like i love these the ink tense um watercolors but i wouldn't use them in i wouldn't use them in my artwork because they're not archival and they're not a traditional watercolor and I, I do love my traditional watercolors because they are a watercolor if that makes any sense these are not a watercolour. Inktense blocks are not a watercolour. Now, Inktense um, Derwent watercolour pencils, they are, they are uh, quality. Um, the sketch of Alfie, um, these are oil-based, but you can use them with a, you can use them, but it's it's a different thing this is this is something that you do to be an artist to be to kind of be the best you can to do things um coloring in is more for therapy is more for well-being because when you're doing a hobby and when you the people that knit it's their thing either they get in the nitty zone and the knitting and they're happy um people that crochet they, they're crocheting they're happy men that are oh, men and girls that do woodwork they're in there they're playing about with the tools and the, the chipping away they're happy um other people do zentangles do doodles 
it's their happy time it's their happy space and that's that's a di- there is a difference and i always say that when you're when i'm doing a painting and when i'm doing a drawing i'm enjoying it but it's bloody hard work um it's it's not it, and it's stressful this is not stressful you know if if you're doing something uh, and you can't make a mistake it's stressful this if i go over the line i want it to look nice and i want to enjoy doing it but I don't, it, it's not got to be absolutely perfect because I, I'm going to sell it or it's doing something else. So there's a, there's a difference. But um, if if you are buying a watercolour, buy, for goodness sake, just buy six colours. Um, sorry, my mouth is really dry today. This is artistic. This is being, it's been creative. It's been artistic. Um, either if you're playing with gorgeous colours or you're creating an image. But it's more for, I mean, the people that make the books, the people that are drawing these books, they're not, they're in a lot of stress. It's obviously their thing, like my mushrooms are, but it's stressful doing that because you're creating um, something that it's got to be kind of almost perfect and the best you can do. A colour book, when you're colouring, has got it, the, the idea of it is that it's it's for well-being it's to do the opposite of what artists do does that make sense so yes i love all the different things i've got and i've adapted them to coloring but they're not really designed for that my professional watercolors are not designed to go in a book these 23 pound brushes um are not designed to be used in a colour book. Um, and that's why they, a lot of them don't work because they, they, they're they not designed for that. They're designed for watercolour paper. And yes, I've got a couple of watercolour paper colour books, but I don't want to use what I class as my professional stuff in here. Um, I have professional pastels, but I'm not, I don't always do professional things with them, if that makes any sense. So, the only reason I was using these today is one is that I found them again. I haven't used them for a long time. But also people that have got pastels and want to colour. I don't want them to think I've only got I've got to go buy some watercolours or I've got to go buy some pencils. Or I've got to go buy something else. I don't like the idea of people buying things just because they want to do something. And that's, oh, I've got to have that because I can't do this if I don't buy those. That the idea of the last few videos is that people use what they've got. If it's a pastel, as long as it's a water-based medium and you use the smallest amount of water, you can use it in a colour book. Um, and if somebody thinks that they might prefer the pastels or use them with at a later date, then it's something to use. But I just wanted to show how adaptive you could be. Um, the only ones that I said you could buy are the ones yesterday because they are watercolours. So in a few years time, you might think, I actually am bored with this now, which most art, most colourists do. They get to a point and you've coloured so many books in, you think, now I want to colour something that I've drawn or I want to make my art. And they move away from this. And if they have the professional stuff, the 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 uh, Winsor Newton Cotman watercolors, then you can go into watercoloring, and you're not having to buy anything else. Um, I'm all for kind of repurposing, and I hope that comes across. That I don't like the idea that yes, these are gorgeous colors. We can make them with watercolors, but they just happen to be there. Oops, the dog's barking. Um, there aren't many colours that are very bright, uh, but I mean, these are very similar. Um, I think this is something obscure and odd as well. I can't remember doing this one. But I hope, does, does that make sense, guys? Do, that I do, I'm trying not to get people to go out and buy things. If the kids have got some pastels, then they can use the pastels. You don't have to say, I've got to go get you some watercolours so that you can colour a book and you won't be bored for the next three months. That's what I'm trying to do. I uh, hope that makes sense. Oh, Shannon says, yes, you understand. <laughs> so um, 
And it, again, it all depends what I'm doing. Sometimes I'll pick a Kirby Roseanne book up and I'll want to do it in a certain thing. And I'm sure everybody else do that. Certain colour books and certain images make you want to do certain things. This book to me is all whimsical like colours. But the Kirby's, I like to do some of them quite dramatic. Um, so blinded headache, guys. Um, so... I'm using these because, as I say, I found them the other day and I like the colours. But really, these should be used on the pastel mat because it is, it's a pastel paper. It's designed. It, it doesn't say here. It's for pastel, a parapastel for pastel, a card for pastel um, because it, it has a tooth and these and it, they'll be dusty. Now, this was done with the Derwent um, pencils, and they're the only pencils I can use, actually, because I can't sit and build and scrub. But I have found that I can use these pencils uh, for sketching, uh, uh, for doing artwork. I probably wouldn't start the pastels in that because I've got asthma. Um, so I hope that made a, a kind of a bit of a sense um, because, as I say, that, that set up, I'm going to ask my hubby to bring it. I think it's something like a tenor or something. And yet, we, we, if you, you could just think, well, I don't fancy watercolours, but I kind of fancy the pastel, you can still use them. Um, I hope I make sense, guys. I don't know if I'm making any sense. I've got a blinding headache. My head's really hot, and again, that's why I wanted to up up the thing but it's it's gout in the head it's not the virus it's just gout in the head and it's a bit <laughs> right so i did that one there so i'll go again and do this i am a bit of a dome went nut but that's because their products last um, and they they kind of um, I don't know they, 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 they make things in, in a certain way that are adaptable um, I always said that if I could only have one one thing it would be the Derwent watercolour pencils. If I could only afford one, one set of anything, it would be the Derwent watercolour pencils because they are the most versatile. You can do a, a wet on wet, you can make washes, you can do fine detail. Um, you really can do absolutely anything with them. Um, and I think I did a Kirby Roseanne. I think it was the, uh, there's a video on the Kirby Roseanne, um, one of the first books, um, pineapple book. And there's a video and on one page, um, on one page, I used the Derwent Inktense pencils. And on the opposite page, I used the Derwent watercolour pencils. Now, bearing in mind the watercolour pencils, when they are re-wet, they will move. The ink tense ones won't. And when you look at the, I'll get the, when you look at them, you can't tell there's much of a difference. There's a fair bit of difference because obviously the ink tense are in very, very bright colours. But full strength Derwent watercolour pencils are blooming vibrant and gorgeous so um, if I could only have one thing it would be the Derwent watercolour pencils because they are they'll do everything and you can also again use them as a pencil you can scratch a little bit of colour and then manipulate them um, I might might get them out tomorrow. Um, I've made a pig's ear of this because I've gone a bit pale. Too early, but never mind. I 
I mean, some people are potty about the neo. Some people are potty about um, other other colours, other things. Sometimes it's like the first thing you want, the first thing you buy. Um, do you love them? And it's what you're used to as well. That's another thing. It's, it, sometimes it's about what you're used to. Now, this brush has got a little bit dry. But if I kind of jiggle it a bit, it'll come back. If you start squeezing, that's when you kind of get a bit more. Oh, she's not going to the Abbey tomorrow. Oh, dear, dear, dear me. Oh, hi, Colour and Felt, Heather. <laughs> I've got that now. It takes me a while. Sorry, guys. It does take me a while. If you bear with me a second, I mean, anybody would say that these are very, very bright. And again, it's because there's a lot of pigment and there's less binder and that's that's the trick i just see if i can find this Um, so I was going on about the one about the stroke. This is the one I did when my husband had his stroke. And this is the one when I was on the stroke ward, um, holding hubby's hand until we found out what was going on and what was what. Um, this is, I held his hand and I just touched the dark bit went somewhere else, went somewhere else, came back. So I got paler and paler and then I went back. And and that's how I did it one-handed. I did it with the number one Derwent brush. And all I did was get the colour. Then I went somewhere else that was a bit lighter. And then I went somewhere else. Then I went somewhere else. And I got paler and paler and paler and paler and paler until there was hardly anything on. And it's one of my favourite pages, even though it was very traumatic. But that kept me so calm really really calm and you can do this one-handed as I say I held hubby's hand there was no noise because it was touch and go um there was no water uh and all the nurses kept coming to say what I was doing and they couldn't believe how calm I was and because I was calm I kept my daughter calm and my husband calm because obviously when you're frightened everything happens um Uh, just, it's going to tell you something else as well. The other thing about the Kirby's is now that they are um, a different price that, because they're older, uh, they're a bit cheaper. Now, this was very interesting. This one, um, when I first saw these pages, I thought I will never color these in because it's a mechanical. It's not my thing. I'm a I'm a flower girl. It's not my thing. And then I was messing about with the colours and I thought um, they're grungy. And so I took, to the, um, there's a video about this. There are six, six to eight complementary colours that I put together. So there's orange, there's red and green, there's orange and blue, and there's yellow and purple. But I had two reds, two greens, two blues. Um, and then I had um, 
a yellow, a purple and an orange. Sorry, a yellow, a purple, a green and an orange. I had two greens as well. So I kind of mixed them up, but I kept them the opposite colours and it was grungy. This one, I made the grunge colours. So I put the grunge colours together. So there's there's um, a purple and a yellow. Um, one that's more purple than yellow. The yellow dulls the purple down. The orange dulls them down, the greens. So I was making grungy colours. And I really loved it. I was making these, these greys, these grungy colours. And I love these colours. So um, I still got the, the, the palette for this one. Um, that was that was what gave me the idea. Again, didn't like these. So that's the Derwent and the Caran d'Ache. There's 12 in each. Metallics. Now, I know they've bought some new metallics out, but there, there's metallics. And this is what the grungy is. So the orange and the blue, the purple and the yellow. So this was my first attempt with professional watercolours. These are my Winsor Newton professional watercolours. Um, and I loved using those, those. That's the set of 24 that I used the other day. Um, again, don't really like this, but use the scrungy method. A scratched yellow, scratched purple, and then pulled the yellow into the purple and then went back, but only once because then otherwise they would have mixed on, on, the, on the page. But love the grunge. Um, and I did start, I started that one and can't remember what it is. I think it's Derwent watercolour pencils, I think. Again, that's what gave me the idea for the grunge because it's metallic, it's metal. Um, and I started that one as well. Now that's his near colour two grunge the grungy method so i need to finish that one actually this is a book that i've started and neglected um this was my first page with watercolors and these are the cotman uh watercolors these are the tubes and i only had three colors i had yellow lemon yellow cadmium uh, yellow lemon yellow elysian crimson and french ultramarine they're the only blues i had uh, sorry, uh, cerulean blue, the printer ink colours. So cerulean blue, um, Elysian crimson and a lemon yellow because you can make every other colour from that. Um, the only thing I struggled with, and that's why instead of saying by three colours, I say by six, is French ultramarine is difficult to make. So my purples are really grungy. They're not vibrant purples. Whereas when I use six colours, I think I use six colours on here. I've got some decent colours. Wrong way, sorry, darling. Um, so um, this is the one that I only well, I did a background with, and I left the um, masking fluid on too thick, and it crunched. And so I never bothered to go back to it. I've done a little bit, but I went off it once I bust the page. This page here, I don't know if you can tell which is ink tense pencils and which is Derwent watercolour pencils. I've still got some beautiful highlights, some lovely highlights, beautiful highlights and this is scratch a bit of colour and then manipulate it out. This I scratched I think 16 different colours and then blended it together. The, the book, I think it's about 16 different pencils. Scratching them round and then blending them together. Yeah, that's ink tense. That's ink tense, and that's the dirt watercolors. But it's only slightly stronger. But I love this page. I love this page. Um, I didn't do it purposely, making them stronger. I just use very similar colors, quite similar colors. Um, I knew that I needed a light yellow and a dark yellow, um, a bit of a blue to tint the green down. Because, again, that's what I do. If you have a green and you put the two blues to it, you get two more different greens. Um, so putting a blue with a green is always a better idea than using another green. 
because it's connected. Um, but I really love doing those two pages. And yes, it is a bit darker, but still that's quite vibrant. When you think the watercolour pencils can do very, very pale, beautiful pale colours and things. I don't know if there's any others um, that I've done. And that was my method of putting the pencil, the, the tabs on the top, and I put the tabs on the bottom when I finished. <laughs> There's not many finished, I have to say. That's quite naughty. Again, that's why I want this time to do that. Finishing off our books. I think that's another thing that should be on our list. Um, we've got some little, I might do the necklaces. I've got a yellow up here. I think I'm going to, oops, clean the brush. Oh, I've dropped that now. Oh, it's gone. I think that's gone. Got it. I'm pretty sure there should be some red on that. Um, I think I'm going to do these. Um, these little bows here. I feel a bit like a politician. Did I answer the question? <laughs> not, quite sure. not quite sure I answered the question. Um, but again, it, this is quite a nice way to do things. Um, it's nice to have a lot of things, but sometimes you neglect things. It's, um, if that makes sense as well, you need to kind of just use um things you like as i say some people are obsessed i mean the neos i had when the girls were little 20 years ago um and again a touch and go system um and i love them in my little color book as well they're in my color book my little book of watercolors that's i love it and i love the fact that i've got peerless in there and i've got lots of others in there as well but I use them for different things, if that makes any sense. Okay, but I was going to try and make, that's very kind of you because I've not had one, but you've got to be a bit careful. So Amy's still going to the Abbey tomorrow. I think she is. I don't know yet. We'll see how, what happens. Well. I will try and persuade her not to. That's what I meant to say. Well, that's fine. I think the young ones have, have got, oh, and normally my girls are quite good, actually. I'm just going to put that on there because I've just decided I want a thing. Um, I don't know. I think the young ones have got quite um, a, a different attitude than I think they should have, really. I think, I don't know. They don't understand that because they haven't got it, they can't pass it on. Really. Never mind. Anyway, never mind. Um, they're mixing with younger people, so so be it. Right, little mouse, little mouse. Oh, we've got a yellow one there. I don't know why I've picked yellow, but I have. I'll stick with yellow. Again, we we need to escape from what's happening. But if anybody wants to natter, I'm not going to ban it as a subject. We need to be positive. We need to share ideas. Um, we need to be sensible, but we need to be practical. And I think that's that's going to be the most difficult bit is to be practical. Um, we've got to be practical, but we've got to be I think we've got to sort things sort things out. Oopsie. Now that's gone a bit paler, but I kind of like that. In tight Yorkshire last. The other thing this does is you never waste any paint, which again is a tight Yorkshire last I love. Every scrap of paint that goes on my paintbrush is going on there. There's only the tiniest of bit that I waste. Uh, now if I go back over here, I should have like an ice cream pale color so i've got rid of the stark white 
Um, now, if I touch if I touch this pink and go over again, I've picked it up. So I can you can use you can even use this as a palette if you've got a strong color. I did that before when I when I ran out of a color, I touched it again. I touched that bright red. Um, I can pick up the color in. But I don't want to touch here because it'd be too bright, if that makes any sense. So pick up there and then go over the toadstools. But I think I've got them all. These are different. So I don't know what I'm going to do with these. These are different. Ah, I do need another touch because I've forgotten these little ones on here. Not quite sure whether they are red or pale. And he's got like an emerald on his head. Let me put that green in. Emerald. We can do the basket. Again, I'm going to look at the browns. So that paler one here, I think I like for the basket. Um, You can get a highlight on there as well. And there we go. Have they got any questions, guys? Oh, colouring, colouring, colouring felt Heather is near Sheffield. Oh, it's not too far away. I'm um, just south of York. I'm near Selby. So I've not gone into Selby Abbey for a couple of weeks um, because um, I thought I'd stop home. So that's a... Oh, it's not a bunny. It's a squirrel and that's a mouse. So again, we can look at greys. We can we don't have to do them traditional colours. We can do a purple mouse, a pink mouse, a yellow mouse. Um, but there are some nice. Um, that's a bit of a mousy colour. Is that one, which is the ninety one, which is down here somewhere, wasn't it? That one is kind of a bit of a. If we take that, it's a ribbon. So if we go into here, and then Do that and then possibly just want to call a tail. I have a bit of a highlight on his body. Oh hi V, welcome to Bunny Designs. Oh thank you, darling. Thank you. Yes, the fur babies are about. Alfie's downstairs. Um, if I kick hubby out, I might, I might have to get Jesse in. <laughs> Jesse might come back if I kick hubby out. Um, I had lost quite a lot of things. Um, I lost all my photographs on my iPad, but um, I did find some. So I did find some. Um, last night, I did find all the baby ones that I'd sent to my daughter. Um, that I, I'd lost I, I because I sent them to her um, I got them back so when I was looking after her I, I think actually that's hers um, I had her when she was a couple of weeks old um, that's my daughter knitted her the, the blanket and crocheted her the little bunny ears 
Um, and so when she came to me, I used to obviously send lots of photographs. That's a lovely one. And she was always after my cross. <laughs> she was always after my cross. Um, but that's how she was when she was a did and she came to stay with me and I looked after her. Um, so here she is. <laughs> and she can tell she's she's tiny there. She's a little diddy. She's a little diddy. Um, and I thought I'd lost all these photographs. That's another one of her snuggling on me so she got quite used to me and and she was she was a couple of weeks old there she was a little did um and then she went she went away and um oh thank you v thank you She went away to, and it was quite funny because I was really worried because um, my my ex had, um, had booked this holiday um, when she was two weeks old. I think she was three weeks old when she went, and I and I said, I can't really. Um, it was, you know, why would you, why would you do that? Um, and if you can tell, there's no sun because it rained for three days and. It cloudy for four um and I didn't mean to be horrible but when my daughter I said did you have and she said no she said because my dad was miserable uh because it was lousy weather and I thought yes <laughs> ex-wives and ex-hubbies can say that <laughs> so um that was wonderful that she hadn't so there she is she had she wore the outfit once uh because um she's just a did isn't she gorgeous um she was born with all the hair and it's going blonde now so when she came to stay with me she's such a cute little sausage um trying to find some she's got bigger and that's a lovely one but granda didn't shut his wardrobe door <laughs> They are watching the clangers. They're watching the clangers. But she was such a good baby. She was such a good baby. Um, and that's the one that I've tried to draw. And I think she's got a mouth shut on the one I was trying to draw. I think she's got a mouth shut. But I'd lost all these photographs. That's the one I tried to draw. It's very similar, but she'd, uh, she just had these huge eyes. Um, and this is the first attempt with the in Procreate. They have a pencil and an eraser. I was using it. Um, the eraser was making lighter and darker. The same you can with the pencil. You can make it lighter or darker. Uh, and I was playing about with the, uh, the with Procreate on the iPad. But I lost the photograph because I lost all the artwork that I had. Um, yeah, she's a bit of a doll. <laughs> Oh, V, you've got a tabby cat. Yeah, we have a tabby. We have a tabby. Um, here she is at Christmas. So, and she does love that unicorn. She does. She's a little dumpling. So, um, I got the photographs back of the cat. Last week, Alfie came up, but he's too noisy when he barks. So, he's been banished back downstairs again now. He's banished. Um, that's I think that's the sketch. No, that's not the sketch with a mouth open. I didn't know she had a mouth open. Yeah, that's the sketch I was trying to draw. Because she's got huge eyes, bless her. She really has got big eyes. So V's got a a, a tabby kitten called five month old called Ruby. Um we've got um a tortoise shell we've got bungle um and then jesse's a jesse is a tabby uh jesse's the one that was found with all her kittens um oh i'm glad i found that that i showed that last week the the pattern um and it was from this helix flow chart i'd use some of the shapes 
Um, so I've got, I'll show you how to do that next week. I think I'll do a thing where you can, you know, even if you don't have any colour books, you can colour. Um, don't think I'm going to find one of our cat. Just don't think I can find one of our cat. Ah, there she is. That's um, that's the the tab the, the tabby um, the charger shell, and we had a disabled bunny, um, and she knew not to touch the bunny. <laughs> they all knew not to touch the bun. And of course, um, there's the boy. <laughs> Suzanne's not here, is she? There's the boy. <laughs> That's the boy, the bad puppy. Um, there's there's Bungle and uh, Bungle and his adopted mum. She always looks like she swallowed a, a wasp. <laughs> but um, it was it was sad. She was found with all her kittens. And normally a mum, when she loses the kitten, she leaves them. But she didn't. She was found with all her kittens and the kittens had perished, but she wouldn't leave them. And she was clinically depressed when we got her. And Bungle wanted a mummy. Um, and when we got him, he was just a lonely boy and they formed a bond. So she got she got us a, a baby boy and he got a mummy. And he, he he he's a typical boy. He pushes her around. He pinches her food. But he goes goes back for a snuggle um, and he does love him. But he's an absolute gorgeous boy. But he has a snotty nose. Um, so nobody wanted him. Um, but he, he's he's an absolute delight. He really is. Uh, but he's gorgeous, but he's such a terror. And and then this is little Jessie, who's absolutely scrum dilly umptious. She'll be coming back in the bedroom because Felicity won't be coming for a while. Uh, we managed to get the girl to be a bit happier. Look, there she is, looking a bit happier. Instead of looking a miserable sausage. <laughs> um, but Jessie's, it took me a long time with Jessie. It took me uh, about six months, I think. Somebody would use her as a cigarette ashtray. They put cigarette burns on her. She, her back's covered in cigarette burns. And she's a real little diddy cat. But she loves everybody. She's such a little delight. That's Jessie. I managed to get her into the lounge. Um, and she loves everybody. She purrs. Uh, there's miserable sausage. Look, here she is. And when, we, when I first brought her home, she was filthy because she wasn't washing herself. And she stopped eating. Um, and then we found that she had white paws and then we shot, we found out she had a white belly and she's immaculate now. She loves to clean herself um, and she loves the sun. Um, that's going to our fair baby. Sorry, guys. That's um, that's our acquisition from uh, Romania. Um, she has got short legs. She looks like that. She's got short legs. <laughs> uh, that's our... Uh, but see, uh, that's our, what do you call her? Oh, what do we call her? Forgotten. Oh, my goodness. goodness, goodness, goodness. I've completely forgotten her name. Frankie. And that was a couple of weeks ago. You see, Bungle always likes to snuggle with his mummy. <laughs> so we can't foster because... Um, the two dogs from Romania killed the guinea pigs. They got in with the guinea pigs in my daughter's bedroom. And so we can't foster anymore unless it's upstairs. Unless it's upstairs. That's the setup I had when I was ill, um, doing the portrait of, of Alfie. Um, so if, if I'm not well, uh, and dear Melody sent me these beautiful pencils, so um, it's quite nice to be able to sit and do, but I do different things with, with different products, if that makes any sense. Um, I don't think I'd want to start doing pastels for one reason is they're very, very dusty. They're really dusty. Um, 
do miss my old paintings i have to say do miss my old paintings um, and i set up a couple of times thinking oh i'm going to do it i'm going to do it and then within about three days i can't hold the paintbrush up i just can't hold a big paintbrush up and paint so i thought i might do some miniatures because i can rest my hand and and paint very tiny so we have to watch this space because i have i have good days and bad days and then i have no days so it's a it's a weird it's a bit of a weird one, I have to say. Um, and then I completely forget what I'm doing as well. So <laughs> that's another thing that's nobody warned me that you forget what you're doing. I have seen your days. <laughs> um, so they're not forgotten, the, the cats and the dogs. The other thing is I've I had to take all the videos down that had them because I was worried about YouTube. So... Um, that's why I didn't make any videos because I was really frightened because I've, I've got over 900, uh, 980 or something. So I'm really scared that, you know, that's a lot of money. Oh, V says somebody abandoned Ruby's mum. Oh, bless. Well, I used to go play with kittens and I still can do that is go play with cats and kittens. I think when the weather's warmer and we get rid of all this, I'll go sit in the cat pen and I normally sit and again, stroke a cat and sketch. So I'm normally, that's what I did with Betsy for about three different, three times um, uh, over a period of about three, six weeks. I sat and stroked her. Um, and she wouldn't come out of the cocoon. I just stroked her. But my hand was not only smelly, it was all kind of greasy and grungy because she wasn't feeding herself. Um, and then she stopped eating. And I thought, well, if we don't do anything, she won't be about. Um, and she just came round. It took a long time. And now she's quite a bossy cat. Uh, but Bungle loves her. So I think sometimes having two works kind of well. So I think that's a bit of a squirrel. So I need a squirrel colour, color, which is the ready one down here. Um, so you can start being, can be a red squirrel. Squirrel, <laughs> squirrel. So yeah, pets, pets are really good. Um, I, I said about the RSPCA is if people are on their own, they maybe could foster a cat, one that can't go in a pen, or if we clear the pens, and the idea of fostering is it's not forever. So you, you, know, you give it a go, you look after this cat, uh, you play with it, stroke it, feed it, socialise it, um, and sometimes most of the with Jesse uh, and Betsy, you can't say right. I like I do with the cat, the kittens. We have this what we call hisy spitty, and the kittens. We, if there's any uh, kittens about with a feral cat, they catch the feral cat, and obviously with the kittens. And then when the kittens can be weaned they spay the cat and release her so she can't have any more. And then there's a hissy spitty job of making the kittens humanised so they become a domestic kitten so they can be rehomed. Uh, and it's one of my jobs is, oh, he's got a ring on his toe. He has a ring on his toe. He's a very posh squirrel. Um, my job is to pick the kittens up and have a play. Now, sometimes I sit and I pick a kitten up and it's hissy spitty. I hold a lit, I mummy it, I snuggle with it. Um, and then I put it down and I play and they come to me. But we do have the point where we have to pick them up um, and make them not be afraid of being picked up. Now with, with Betsy and Jessie, because they have been traumatized it takes a long time but you sometimes have to let the cat come to you um i did pick her up a few times it stressed her out that much so we then let the cat come to us that could take six months um 
So sometimes, uh, but it's nice to be uh, listening to the Hoover is another thing, getting them used to Hoover's, pots and pans, people coming and going. But some cats just have to be quiet with one person. Um, and so that's why people could foster a cat when they're on their own now. So they're not lonely and the cat is getting a little bit of human interaction um, and it's freeing up the pens as well so uh, and dog walking obviously you've got to go to the kennels to get the dog but anybody that needs to go for a walk can go to dog walk so there's lots of things people can do if they don't want to sit and color because we don't always want to sit and color 24 7 i mean i could sit and paint all day because that's my thing but a lot of people don't want to do that. They just want to use it as a tool to de-stress. Um, we're probably going to find a lot more people colouring because um, a lot of our soaps are being cancelled in the UK. Um, I personally don't use watch them. But I need to squeeze a bit. Oops, now I've got too much now, but... Anyway, no mind. It'll be fine. Got to be a little bit careful. You can do it once, but it's the scrubbing and the wet that damages it. Let's see if I can get rid of this. Kind of got rid of it. I think we've had quite a lot of, of things cancelled, so uh, we just have to plough on, keep calm and colour, which never has been more appropriate than now. I'm going to put a little bit of pink on there if I can, I think. Um, and we've got squirrel ears. But it is definitely very therapeutic, his colouring. <laughs> oh, thank you, V. She's inspired me to colour my colouring books. Yeah, that you've hoarded. Um, yeah, I think I think we always say, like, we need more time for this. If I had time, I'd do that. Um, working through our colour books, I think, is going to be pretty cool because um, we've, we've all got far too many. <laughs> which we love i mean there's nothing wrong with that but now is the time to wade our way through them i think and uh, and kind of really really um and i haven't looked at new ones for seven seven or eight months um i haven't done any coloring or anything um i don't know what i've done i think i've just watch tv i just really and uh, not tv tv uh, old movies and things and 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 kind of lost my way definitely lost my way um very depressed very down very not me um and it sneaks up on you kind of without you knowing it, it's it's a bit it was a bit of a weird one i have to say um and i hadn't realized i was really really depressed had not realized at all how depressed i was uh, because i've never felt depressed it it was a very weird thing um and i think that's why we've fallen out with the with the girls the girls have really fallen out with me and it was the girls why i did it it, it was that they were they were the thing that normally would have kept me sane but didn't um and it, it was it was not a good time i have to say um and the worst thing is when you wake up in hospital and you feel such an idiot it's it, it was it was a very very weird thing i have to say and i hadn't intended to wake up it was it was not a nice thing 
but it snuck up on me as I as I told the um, the put you on this um, thing that you have to go and have an interview and things, and and I think yeah you get upset and you get fed up, but I've never been like this, so it was it was a bit of a shock. Um, but you you have again the guilt and the shame which makes the original reason why you're depressed even worse. Um, so it, it, it was, a, it was, but it's, it, as you say, it's just sprung up. It sprung up within an hour um, and then it totally got out of control. It was just a really weird time, I have to say. Um, I think I'm going to do those orange i think i want an orange in there although it seems to be all pinks oh thank you v yeah hubby hubby's done this thing i've been i've been in isolation and hubby's been coming between in this room and then he's been going downstairs mixing with the girls and i'm thinking oh, that's not the idea but um i think he'll tighten his belt up a bit now but my daughter didn't go to work because she's um she's just got this new job and the people are quite vulnerable i like that peach but i've used it but i do like that that lovely peachy color there i have to say i like that so it, it's yeah you've got to be a bit careful because even when you don't think you are depressed you, you things just pop up and bite you in the backside oh i've got a purple there i've got purple and pink oh i might have to use that pink purpley pink I think there's there's that green and there's another green. So there's another green there. Um, five hundred's a nice green, isn't it? It's five hundred. I've got some red on the end of there now. I need to get rid of this red. What can I do with the red? Oh, bow. Bow. I really don't know what colour to do with those. Oh, well, I was thinking blue, but I was thinking purple blue. But actually, oh, now I think that P290 is French ultramarine because P29 is the is the the compound given, the colour given, the number, the number, gosh, the number given to French ultramarine is p29 so it's a purple it's not oh is it b29 no it's b29 for for blue 29 because hmm. yellow um cadmium yellow is is y13 i think oh i can't remember my names my colors have gone i thought it was p19 but think I'm sure it's P, but it must be B because it's a blue, it's not a purple. Mm. Anyway, the 29, that's definitely French ultramarine. So I'm going to use that one for my little kind of actually I think it's supposed to be a white, but hey ho. Again, you don't always have to do this one. So if I start with the bottom one, and, and then move over there, and then move over there, see what I mean about getting different colours. So we've got this one under here, and then we can have that one there, that one there. Um, That one there, we can have that one there. It doesn't work next to each other, but it works when you go to different sides. 
so this is a kind of a, a darker one lighter one and that would be even lighter it doesn't always work but Mr. Brush. That's wet now, I can tell. So thanks for joining me, guys. Hope everybody's okay. Ah, oh, thank you, PB. That means it's a purple blue. Thank you, V. Thank you, PB. <laughs> yeah, purple blue, 29. Um, y is yellow. Cadmium orange is Y something. Oh, cadmium is Y O something. Um, yes, it's it's a uh, it's purple blue, isn't it? That's what it stands for. But the 29, uh, cobalt blue, I think is just a B. Um, it's a number given to the pigment. Uh, so I think with, with this saying 29, it's uh, it, it means that it's 29. Uh, pure compound colors or pure colors will just have one letter. Um, so, uh, something like, like magenta, uh, that's just what, that is one color. Uh, but, um, I can't think of a color that's mixed now. Something like, um, oh, I just can't think of a color that's mixed. Um, an orange one would have a Y, a Y-O, um, because it tells you the color uh, no i tell a lie if it's a if it's a pure color it will have its own color number if it's a mixture of two colors you'll have them all in there so that's why i know that Payne's gray is made because it's got pb29 and b11 which i think is so I, I'm going to look it up because it will drive me nuts. So if it's if it's uh, Payne's Grey is mixed with French ultramarine and a brown. And I'm just going to go look it up because it will drive me nuts if I don't find out. Oops, nope. Right, so let's look up. No, let's look up um, color numbers. Ah, that's the one I want. H T. Perhaps not. Perhaps not. Right, so if I go there. No, that's not what I want. Come on, frame yourself. Um, it's a bit like the periodic table. Um, so, um,
Oh, come on. Right, I have an acrylic paint and it's written on it. Um, no, I can't get what I want. I'm losing the wheel now. Sorry, guys. We're on a we're on a travel. We're on a thing now. Oh gosh! Come on. Yeah, ultramarine and burnt sienna. I use um, I use a different one to that, but but it's not going to tell me what it is. Um, the only way to do it is if I look at There we go, the pigment color. So Elysium Crimson is, is PR206. So let me find. These are professional colors. So um, So um, Scarlet Lake is PR188. Um, so um, Windsor Yellow is PY154. Gamboge is PY153. So these are pure colors. Uh, they're pure compound colors. Um, that's Elysium 206, so it's right, that's 206, that's 206. Ochre will be yellow ochre is PY43 because yellow ochre is a pure compound. So they've all got colours, and I don't think I've got a paint grey. Let's have a look. Um, all these are pure colours. Uh, so the P is for the pigment, pigment 29, that's what it means. So this is P B 20, uh, BP29, which is a blue 29, somewhere I should say. Yeah, blue 29, um, burnt umber, because these are all pure pigments. Um, so yellow 42, but we want a mix, I want to mix, let's have a look at this one. If you pick a green, oh, I don't know, Viridian. Viridian is a, a pure compound, isn't it? But So Windsor Green is PG36. So that is a pure green colour. Let's have a look. What to find? The paint's grey. I bet I can't find one because I want to find one now. Um, oh, we've got here Prussian Blue. So Prussian blue. Oh, it's not on. It's not on. It's not on. What I'm trying to find is a, a mixed one that will tell you what it's got in it. That's PG23. Sorry, guys. This is going to drive me insane. Sure, I've got a Payne's Grey. 
but anyway if you look is all good quality ones tell you what they are I'm sure i found a paint spray somewhere this is dark this is dark brown oh my goodness me and this is py164 it's got yellow in it but some of them tell you all the different long numbers. I can't find where I can't find a long number. Uh, ultramarine violet is PV15. So it's a violet 15. A mix, a mix, a mix. Hooker's green. I think that's a G. Now, Hooker's green is a Y110. Uh, PY110 and PG36. So we, if you got yellow 110, which I think is um, it's quite a warm yellow, and you got P uh, and, and you got green 36 with Hooker's Green. So I said I make it with sap green. So sap green is, and you could do it this way. Instead of looking at the colours, you can look at the colour, the numbers, and then mix them together. So that's how they come up with the colours. So sap green is not telling me what sap green is. So I'm not happy. Um, What's in this hand? That's burnt shadow. No, burnt shadow. But anyway, um, let me have a look at this yellow. What's this one? Um, do, do, do. Come on, where is it? PY35 is cadmium yellow. So this should be PY2, I think, something like that. Uh, PY53. So that's not the yellow that makes, it's not the compound yellow that makes sap green. That's yellow 154. And we want yellow 110. Um, what's in Naples yellow? So that's the pure colour. Now I make them by eye, by mixing them, but it's not a true colour because I've mixed them. Um, and that's why some some are more, in, more some are cheaper than others. So um, cerulean blue is da, 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 da. Uh, blue thirty five. So if you find a green with B35 on it, you know that's how to make your green. Does that make sense, guys? I hope that will show you a bit about colours. Now, normally, oh, P51 is Windsor Yellow. 154 is Windsor Yellow. So oh, here's an orange. This is Transparent Orange by Windsor & Newton. And it is. It's. 0107 and that means that transparent orange is its own color it's not being mixed does that, does that make sense <laughs> does that make sense so it the p the p is for pigment and then the the p is for pigment and then you get the colors so this one is ultramarine violet and that has, that's V15. Um, thalo, what's Thalo got in it? 156. Ultramarine is B29 because it's, it's PB. P stands for the pigment. So a red will be pigment R something or other. So 
Um, we've got PR 11188 for Scarlet Lake. Uh, burnt sienna is a pure colour, so it should be brown. So it should be PB something. Let me just look. No, it's part of the red. So it's PR101. Burnt umber has no red in it at all, I don't think. Uh, burnt umber is... Da, da, da. You see some... Some cheaper ones, because this is the Cotman, um, they don't put it in, but there we go. It's BR7. So it's its own colour. So burnt umber is BR, B, BR7 for brown. BR, so it's PBR7 and PB um, pigment blue 29 so if we look at Payne's grey that's the numbers you should find on them but because i don't buy a Payne's grey i haven't got i did think i'd have one by accident these are all my colors i've been buying it's that one. british sand British Sea and again because he's a professional they probably put the colour in for you so British Sea by Dale Rowney is uh, made with PB which is blue 29 and yellow 42 so if you've got yellow 42 and French ultramarine you could make British Sea which is a colour, as you see. Um, I don't think I've got a 29. 29 is, is a very pale one, like like, like a, ye a lemon yellow. And I think all these were in the hundreds, weren't they? Um, yeah, 154. Um, I think Gambo's 153. Lemon yellow. One five four. So winds are yellow. Winds and winds are yellow is basically a cadmium yellow. They just called it a different name. Let me just have a look. Um, 35. Did I say 35? Oh, let me have a look. Did I say 35? It's very near a cadmium yellow and a French ultramarine is very near this British Sea colour. So you can tell how they make them up. Um, I do have a Payne's grey in something, but I've hidden it because I never use it. And black is B, so you'd have uh, BK, so you have BK9. Um, I think BK5 is lamp black. Um, I get fascinated by colours, you have to forgive me, I do apologise. Permanent sap green is made by 36 and one and yellow one one zero so if you got pigment green 36 and you added a yellow to it you would get sap green so that's how they do it now you can either do it that way or you can do it by eye um i hope that made a bit of sense guys sorry for the um rabbit trail
and that goes for acrylics, oils, um, uh, acrylics, oils. Um, oh gosh, brain. Um, do you know? I think these on here. They might be on here. Let me just have a look. They could be on here. Let's have a look. Aha. No, I thought they were on the near color twos. I could have sworn they were on the near color twos, but maybe they're not. I thought they were on the near color twos, but they're not. Always open them. Let me have a look at this one. No, they're not on there because these are cotton. This is when I was trying to cut them in half to put them in the little boxes and I couldn't do it. So, um, if you look at uh, French Ultramarine in a good quality acrylic, it will have that pigment because all pigments are the same it's just a different binder oh thank you pamela thank you has anybody else got any any sorry about we went on a bit of a tangent we just went on a bit of a tangent didn't we it's getting on my nerves now with those i'm nearly finished um again if you you can feel it's not the same because it's it is a little bit it won't come off um but you can feel it's not like a water a color because it's a grittier pigment if that makes any sense oops excuse me so now i need a different green i think i'm going to go for the paler green uh 30 this one this one um, for these and again we can do one one leaf and then another and then down here and by the time we go back to the top it can be very pale because we've got too much pigment on to go light to dark so And I've just, I went over on that blue line and I've got rid of it. So it will come up. It will come up. You can scrub and it'll come up. Now, obviously, we don't want to scrub too much because we don't want that to happen. But if you were using this any other way, you, you could do that. It will come up. And pastels come in thousands of colours, thousands of colours. So it's quite interesting that you can, if you have a set of pastels, I said, I was, oh, I was going to ask Kobe to bring that set of pastels up for me because it, they are just, there's, there's, there's probably, they're about, a, they're a bit fatter than these, but there's a, they're about an inch long. And you get them in some sets of about 45 colours um, for about £20. Um, and you could use those like this. Obviously, the more expensive the pastel, oops, the more expensive the pastel, the more pigment in it, like anything. But the cheaper ones have enough in to, to kind of make this system work.
almost looking at it like it's a bit of cheese because it's, it's not but um we want rid of that don't we so now we've got i've got some of this color on here and i want rid of it so i'm going to go under here and under that one um and just to get rid of that stark start color off so this little brush is really good um but for heaven's sake don't pay i've seen these for 10 20 pounds don't know that because we really don't want to do that i think i'm going to have some um bit of colour on this seeing as they are little baubles and then I think I've got, I've got to clean the brush this time because I'm going to oops, 11 I'm going to yellow rather Sorry guys, it's feeding time at the zoo. these I think I'm going to do these bright pink I've decided I think we need a bit of brightness oh no I don't want bright pink got to be quite careful but with as a little effort we can get different tones from that one pink oops it drops very cold all of a sudden and I say I've got the windows wide open so it's like being outside I thought I need a bit of fresh air but then you get too cold. We have those little creases which drive everybody insane. <laughs> and then because it's because it's like that, we can go for we can go straight to purple. Oops, wrong purple, but hey, 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 okay. Oops. You see, by doing that by accident, I have now found a beautiful deep aubergine. I've made aubergine by using um, the purple and that one by mistake. I've made an aubergine, whereas that's quite auberginish, but that's um, a lovely purple, pale. Paler purple, 
shall we say. Um, and I did it by accident. So again, sometimes you can get some nice things by accident. So thanks guys for popping by. I hope everybody's colouring and keeping keeping safe. I have to know those now. These are these big green ones, and I have that nice greeny colour. I haven't, I've used that one, so now I'm going to have to use P42, which is that one, I think. Oops. It is a bit of a darker green, that one, isn't it, I think. Oh, there's Woo Woo. <laughs> the, uh, the first dog we rescued from Romania doesn't bark, but she woo woos. So we call her woo-woo. And my dog got christened to Frankie, but she just, she woo-woos. <laughs> We've never had a dog that woo-wooed before, but she she sits there and goes, woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo. And then Alfie does it, and you stick your finger in the hole in his mouth, and he <laughs> shuts up. Alfie's quite funny when he woo-woos, because he, his little mouth goes with a hole in the middle. And it's so difficult not to stick your finger in the little hole, because he looks very surprised when you do it. And we've only she's only just started to bark. So for months she just woo wooed. I've got to remember to do his little ring on his toe there. So I was absolutely miles away there, guys. Sorry about that. It it does that though. This kind of colouring is is quite well, it's very therapeutic. You really do really go into a little time zone where you just you just kind of ticking over. Um and that's it's um So I'm I'm sorry, guys. It, it 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 does work. This kind of touch and go works. If you've got to stop and think about colours and shading, and and I need to make this colour now. I need to make it darker now. I need to make it darker. Then yes, it's quite enjoyable, but it's not it's not as therapeutic um, as this. This is like you've learned a stitch. Um, and you a uh, crocheting, you just sit and crochet, 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 crochet. Um, this is what that does. It it's it's not mindless, but it's not it's not stressful. As I say, if you're doing something and you want a particular green and you think, oh, is it that yellow or is it that yellow or is it that blue? This doesn't do that. This is this is literally touch and go. Um, and yes, you can think a little bit about 
um, you can think a little bit about uh, color and shade and things, but not to the extent that it causes um, it causes any problems. I'm just going to do those underneath some of those. That one. One. So I um, hope I've inspired you to use pastels if you've got them, pencils if you haven't. I won't be doing anything with pencils. Um, the only ones I probably might use is the graphite tint. But then I don't want people, because they are absolutely yummy, but I don't want people to have to go out and go, all right, I'm going to go buy some um some graphite tint because i love them um so i'm 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 always conscious of that i'm conscious of people trying to save money and doing this as i say just purely for therapy rather than um but the derwent graphite tint um they are pretty good and they are completely different i think there's a um a joanna basford christmas uh, and it is quite, they are quite nice to use. And because there aren't many of them, I don't know why I'm doing that that colour, but never mind, I've done it now. Because, because there aren't many of them, it works quite well. I'm going to put a bit of that brown on there. So this has been a, um, quite a shorter um it's taken me oh to mind you i did do a, a little bit of waffling just a little bit of waffling <laughs> just a touch so perhaps it would do uh so i think i mean unless anybody wants anything different i did say tomorrow i was going to do the um colin thompson color book um so i don't know if he's got that one I don't know whether to leave the stars white or not. I think I might colour them in. I think I might colour them in and I think I might do them a bright yellow. So I do need to clean that. I do need to clean the brush now. If I'm going to do this kind of quite bright colour. But leave the white ones white, I think I might do that. And again, sometimes I spend ages looking at colours and thinking, and this method you don't, which is quite nice. Um, I'm not being derogatory to the book. It's just it lends itself to that. I don't feel so I can be more whimsical with the colours, whereas other books I want to be kind of a little bit um more restraint and think more about colour and things. But again, that's the beauty of having different types of books. Um, but we want we want to find um, a medium that we like and that will suit every book we've got. So we can do that with that. Um, and as you say, the, the Derwent pencils do that. So I could work with Derwent pencils tomorrow and still use the touch and go system, which I'll show you tomorrow, because um, I do like that. So I think that's done, actually. Um, and I've got a little bit of variation. It looks completely different to how, oh, thank you, V, to how I would normally do it. But yet there is a bit of similarity. Um, so I, I, I obviously like working with these particular types of colours. Uh, and again, this is touch and go. This isn't uh, water colouring, which is something else that I do. Um, this is this is just uh, the touch and go system, which I quite like. It, it's very simple. It works quite well. Again, you start dark, you go medium, light, 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 and that you go round and round. And again, it works quite well because these these beautiful um whimsical images let you do that 
Has anybody else got any questions, guys? Sorry, I'm a bit cold now. <laughs> Hope his tea's gone cold as well. Um, so I, I will be wake, making my way through these, um, but I, I might do uh, the Colin Thompson book tomorrow. Um, and I'll be using, because I might give these to my daughter because she likes to use, she likes the ink tense blocks. I might give her those because they're still very vibrant and she does like the blocks. Um, I've got my pencils, I've put the pencils back into a box, I think. I have two boxes. And one thing I should have done is put that into that tin. That's the job I need to do. Um, and I've had those for quite a number of years, and I've never done that. So that's quite good for me. Let me have a look what's in this one. Now, this is my, these are my original ones. Um, but the box I bought at a different time. Now, I think 72, 6, 8. And then two, six, eight, ten. Um, I'm going to put these were in a tin, and I bought these second hand. Um, and the wood isn't brilliant, but it's the better wood than the new one. So if you see this one, um, it's an old one. Uh, but I've obviously got these colours out because I've been using them. Um, they normally come in a tin. But the reason I want this is because I find I've got a lot of problems pulling my pencils out of one of the other ones. So I think I'm going to use this. I think I'm going to use this one for my other pencils, my light fast, so that I can lift them out and put them back because I can lift them out. The other one I'm pushing, nipping and pushing them in and nipping and pushing them out. And um, as I'm not going anywhere, I don't need them in that case that I showed yesterday. But these are gorgeous colours. Um, I love this Derwent set. I like the, the I, did a, I did a comparison, which I didn't want to do. Um, I like this one because it's slightly creamier, very slightly creamier than the new one, which would be in dark blue. I mean, I do have the new set. Um, and again, because we've brought everything upstairs into the bedroom, um, I think the ink tents are in this one. Um, I picked these. Oops, we are upside down. None of my pencils came in the box because I couldn't afford them in the box. Ah, now this is the Derwent watercolour pencils as you see them today. Oh, I've used them quite a lot. Oh, I didn't realise I'd used them that much. Um, now the burnt carmine. Um. I use that one a lot because I love, love, love it. I might go back to the pencils, actually. I think I might go back to the pencils. And I can use this set because this is the set that, um, this is the set that you buy now. So when you buy it, this is what you get. But the colours are just amazing. You do have absolutely amazing colours. So I think I might have to... Um, I'm going to put those in there, put the other ones in the original tin, which I found recently. So I need to get more organised. Everything's higgledy-piggledy. Um, and again, I'm going to have to use this time to get organised. So thanks for stopping by, guys. Um, I will be back on tomorrow because I'm not going anywhere. Um, oops. I'm going to try, yeah, I'll leave that out actually because I'll sort that out. Um, I must shut that window because it's gone. Um, not had any lunch today, so I'm a bit peckish. What time are we on now? What time are we on now? I need a time. Let me have a look. 
So has anybody else got any questions? But I think I'll work in the Colin Thompson book tomorrow. It's five o'clock. Um, the Colin Thompson book. I bought a new one. So I think I'll work with the Derwent pencils in the Colin Thompson book. That's the new. Just have to buy it again. This is the first book I ever bought. Broke my heart to have to spend ten pounds on it, but I love it. I absolutely love it. And that's the Derwent watercolor pencil. Again, um, using the touch and go mesh method, but with a rigger. I did this with a rigger. So I'm wondering if I can do it perhaps with the Derwent water brush. I think I'm going to use the don't water brush purely because it's easier. Um, my problem is I start things and I forget. That's the don't watercolor pencils where I've scratched it and then manipulated it. Um, that one is with a watercolor, I think. There are videos on all these. If you go on up there somewhere and type in, um, if you look on the playlist, you want Colin Thompson coloring book, uh, and you will find all of them. That's his neo pastels, neo art pastels, in that one. Um, I may have to just move that box because might show the colours up better when it's flat. Now this one is pastel. Again this one's in pastel and we've got some beautiful beautiful music. Oh thank you V, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you Pamela. Thank you. Um, what else have we got? I just love, love all these shapes. Um, I can't always remember what I used. That's ink tense pencils, and I put stickles on the Christmas tree. We find some stickles, stickles sparkling on the Christmas tree. Um, that says Derwent pastel pencil brush blended with water. Derwent pastel pen. Ah, yes. What I used with this is um, scratched a bit of colour and then manipulated it uh, with a water with a water brush. Um, I think that one was gouache, but I can't remember. But I love doing that. Really love doing that. And again, this is why I normally do little windows yellow because that's how they come out. Um, this is in really, really scrummy colours. We can all come to show. Absolutely love the colours there. And there's not a, you can get those colours and there's not a lot of water. That was the scratch one. Um that's the watercolour one. There are, as I say, there are videos on all of them. That's Derwent watercolour pencil, that one. Um, I don't know if that one's peerless. I can't remember. That's, um, that's my problem. I start and then I can't forget. I think that one's in pastel. That was in the Derwent pastel pencils. The Derwent pastel pencils, again, they're quite yummy. Uh, because you can get, you can scratch and go, ink, tens, pencils. Don't know what I've used there. Can't remember. Um, I have ideas for graphite tints. Um, this is a bit stronger, this one. So this looks to me as if it's... Uh, Neocolor twos, I think. 
oh no that's the in pastel pencil that one definitely that's the first page i did so um i know that that's pastel pencil again the touch and go system is something that perhaps we could use on that one Um, but I think I'd, I think I'll work on a page with my pastel, uh, with my Derwent watercolor pencil. So I'll work on the Colin Thompson book. Has anybody got any questions? So thanks for joining me, guys. Have a wonderful afternoon, morning or evening, depending on where you are on the planet. Um, and I should be... I don't know where that is. I don't know what that is. Um, I should be with you tomorrow, all being well. So thanks, guys. Thank you on YouTube for watching. If you like anything, please like and subscribe. And if you don't like it, tell me why you don't like it. Um, and um, there should be some shorter videos coming soon because I know people don't like long ones. Um, and if you have any ideas or you think anything is right or wrong, let me know because then I know whether to be quiet or whether to carry on. <laughs> so thanks, guys. Have a lovely afternoon.